if you guys have watched any of my previous content, then you know how much I love the North Sport products. If you guys want to get any of the great North Sport products for yourself, use the code Base Drop Keys. That will save you 10% off any order at Norsport.com. So uh, let's let's talk about uh, mushrooms a little bit more here. As far as on the gourmet side, what is your favorite gourmet mushroom? Well, right now, I've always said that I love Piopinos, not for the taste, because honestly, to me, the mushrooms kind of all taste the same. Okay. Uh, but I love Piopinos just because they look so much like cubes. And you'll see that if you grow them correctly and you get a good cluster of Piopino mushrooms, they look like a cluster of magic mushrooms. I think that's pretty cool. And I think um, if we can kind of get a culture that is used to just growing on the cocoa coir that grows well on cocoa coir, that could be like a substitute practice strain for people to grow mushrooms because they look and they grow pretty much just like magic mushrooms. So the number one is Piopino. Number two are those chestnut mushrooms that look like they have that spiky armor on them. Oh, right. Yeah. They look cool. them, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then lion's mane ever... because... I'm about to say, you know, lion's mane is very popular. Yeah, lion's mane is popular. And then you'll have people tell you that you can't just eat lion's mane. You can't just powder it up. You need to get the extracts from lion's mane. And it's like, where's the science on all of this? There's people who are trying to back all this stuff up with science. And I think it's just because they're trying to sell their extracts <laughs> to make oh, tinctures and stuff. You know. Right. So actually, I have a jar of lion's mane. I just keep it on my desk that I grew. Oh, there we go. And it stays dry in the glass like we talked about. This is uh, years old now. Because I don't know what people talk about. Lion's mane is like seafood and stuff. But the mushrooms all taste like mushrooms to me, no matter how I cook them. <laughs> so, what's your favorite way of cooking them? I it's a classic um, garlic butter in a pan, or I'll use them in spaghetti. Or what I've done before is put them on pizza mm -hmm. or ramen. Well, the ramen falls into the soup. Yeah. But I can't handle the taste of dried mushrooms because they sell like mushroom chips now, like portobello chips. And when you're eating those, even if they got salt and pepper on them, it tastes like you're trying to still crunch down just raw, dry magic mushrooms. And that flavor just, <laughs> yeah. it's not good to me. <laughs> what, what, what's your feelings on, you know, there's people that's drying them, crushing them, and then making uh, like peels? Oh, yeah. You've seen that? I've seen those. Yeah. I've seen people make um, the gummies, too. Right, and right. I actually uh, made gummies on the channel. I will I be uploading that. Some people ask me. It's on the website right now, but I will be uploading that on the channel in a couple of days. So you guys look out for that. I remember that. And I know I saw a couple of different ways where you could make a mushroom tea and use mm -hmm. that tea as the liquid for the gummies. Or you could just straight up throw the powder into the mixture when you're making the gummies. And I don't know right. maybe if there's a better way, which one's better or not. I don't know. I feel like the tea, you'd lose some stuff. Whereas if you well, I, I did it, powder, I did the latter way that you were saying, where I made yeah. the gummy mix and I put the powdered mushroom inside the gummy mix and made them that way. And did you consume them? Did they do anything? Oh, they work. Okay, good. Maybe they work and they, they didn't it. taste like. I think the biggest, I think the people that would benefit from that is like you were saying, you, you don't like the taste of it. Because whenever I did it that way, you get a little taste of the mushroom, but really what you're tasting is that the gummy, the gelatin, and whatever. And so that, you know, just like you're saying, the salt and pepper won't overbear the taste of it, but the gummy, that does. You know, you get that sweetness and that, like, sugar kind of content. That definitely yeah. takes the taste it's away from the mushroom. It. Yeah. I know um, one of my older videos, I think it's, I, I renamed it into something like a kitchen countertop mushroom grow idea. And I had, like, a famous ending to it where I threw the magic mushrooms into a boiling pot of ramen noodles. Mm -hmm. and I ate it after the video was done, and it, it blew me away because I didn't measure anything. Like, I was right. tripping hard for a long time, and everyone I'm about to ask you, did, did that, I was going to ask you, did that work? Yeah, it worked, and everyone's comments were like, wait, didn't you boil away the compounds? You know, they can tolerate a lot before you start losing potency and all of that stuff. So oh, people have been that. making tea for years with – with no issue. I don't see why. I, that's why I didn't think boiling them in the ramen to finish it up would do anything. So I was able to eat them, tasted just like regular mushrooms and ramen. And oh, there we go. I didn't measure anything. It was a huge mistake. I've never done it again because it was way too much for me to handle. <laughs> it was crazy. That's great. Too many people worry about uh, the heat 
with dehydration. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like the heat from it. When, when exactly yeah. does it go from, you know, start degrading the potency and everything? There's studies where people say it can go up to like 400 degrees Fahrenheit before oh, really? Really okay. starts breaking down. But you can find the other end where it says, you know, up to 200 Fahrenheit. So a lot of us dehydrate between like, you know, uh, the room temp with just a fan blowing on it up to like 180 degrees Fahrenheit with no problem. I do 120. Yeah, I think too many people worry about losing potency because they're going to sit anyway unless you're going to eat them right away. And naturally stuff just is going to lose its vigor anyway. Not to the point to where it's completely a dud, but it's people too many people worry about it. I don't think it's a big problem to worry too much about losing compounds or alkaloids to heat. Are you into eating fresh mushrooms? Yeah. I like um, when you... So it depends, you know, gourmet or magic. There has been times where <laughs> I've picked a fresh one off the cake and ate it. And even then, people say they hit you harder and faster because of the psilocin versus the psilocybin. Okay. So apparently the fresh fruits are more full of the psilocin, which is what your body breaks the psilocybin down into anyway to give you the experience. So when you eat the fresh magic fruits, they're more full of psilocin, and then that's hitting you harder and faster right away because your body doesn't have to break it down into psilocin to start. So I've done that before and overdid it, didn't realize how much, you know, I just ate two, and it was gross, <laughs> just like the dried ones. Um, I've, never had, I've never ate any fresh ones. Try it. I mean, you got to be in the mood, and then you're just gonna start gagging on it if you don't. But I like I like regular mushrooms. Like I like mushrooms in my spaghetti and everything else. I don't mind regular like button mushrooms and stuff. But are you eating into, fresh uh, mushrooms like is people are pan frying mushrooms. Yeah, pan fry like the saute. Um, that's what I used to try with lion's mane. You know, people said garlic, butter, loaded up seasonings. I'm like, okay, but it still just tastes like a mushroom to me. <laughs> so I'm like. Man, what's the point of growing the gourmet mushrooms when I can right now just buy the ones from the local farmer's market and all that, support them while I continue making the magic content for other people? <laughs> right. But Do you like yeah. uh, oyster mushrooms? Yeah, oyster mushrooms. Um, I did, when I grew pink oyster mushrooms, I would throw those into ramen a lot. And then, of course, everyone always says ramen has too much sodium in it, but <laughs> drink enough water, it's fine. <laughs> right. I've never really just taken mushrooms and pan fried them and ate them by themselves you really have to for me i got to mix it into like a meal with other things otherwise everything just tastes the same and i'm like why am i just eating plain mushrooms even if it's just for the benefits if i can just continue it over into a meal right but that makes sense like we like we said earlier with foraging i can't imagine just picking Unless I, I can't imagine picking a mushroom off the cake and eating it raw as it is, just uncooked, fleshy, like I did with the magic ones before. Because the texture to me, I'm not a big fan. But once you break it down and cook it, it's a little more palatable. Okay. But it's something to try. If people want to try it, go ahead. It's a different experience when you eat fresh magic ones versus the dried ones that have been sitting for a little bit. I'll definitely have to give it a try because I definitely haven't done that yet. <laughs> yeah, you got to get in the mood. You got to like pump yourself up. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so going forward here, your plans for 90-second mycology, I think we were alluding to it earlier when you said that you had the 90-second media going. Yeah. So what's your plans going forward here as far as the content? So my plan is um, the chan- the YouTube channel I have up now. 90 sm media i'm going to continue uploading my older videos on there and getting the community going again okay um i just released a patreon post asking my community's input on how they feel on a weekly live stream again because way before even michael geeky started his uh live streams or his podcasts i was doing live streams at least once a week with this guy people might remember he was known as the good fun guy okay he also disappeared and i haven't heard from him in forever so thinking about doing that on that channel as I continue uploading older videos. Um, But for the newer content, I want to release it to Patreon first into my paid archive because I have some videos and live streams right now in my paid archive that a lot of new people haven't seen because they are those OG live streams and videos that 
just they're they're too hot, too hot for YouTube and the free archives right now. Because right. like you said before, even Patreon now can just take our stuff away. So right. I was I've thinking about, everything... like I was thinking about doing Patreon, but we know who knows when their policies are gonna change. So I just right. figured it better just to have my own website. So I, I went right. that direction. That, I think that's the way to go because I was originally considering that. Um, but the thing is, is just people already have Patreon accounts. So I thought one more mushroom creator, they're already logged in. They just sign up for me, whether it's free or they choose a paid tier. And the plan moving forward is to just keep on keeping on. So the next content that I've been working on forever, I've been running into issues since I released the microwave tech, is the Ziploc tech. So with Ziploc tech, we're going to go through fruiting from Ziploc bags instead of doing containers. We're going to go through grain spawn in Ziploc bags instead of, you know, using the original Uncle Ben bags that you can't see into or even right. making your own brown rice with Ziploc bags. I ran into issues with that because my old camera had all the footage. I was filming them in tandem, microwave tech and Ziploc tech together. And then I don't know what happened to the old camera. Like I read like the internal battery could have died and it messed up the memory card. It wiped stuff out. I couldn't load stuff on the computer. Mm. So it's just been a battle. And then I'll film stuff to get it ready to go. And then I run into stuff with work and overtime or something happens to the family and the stuff colonizes too long and it's not good to use. So I appreciate the people that have been sticking through with me. Well, 90, I want to say thank you very much once again. For showing me so much love since i showed up on the scene i appreciate it and obviously we're going to be doing stuff in the future for sure always always for sure and i hope uh anyone else who wants to start making videos out there just try it and see what happens because either either you could become a big brand or you're just like it's for me it started as a hobby a lot of people started as a content creator as a hobby and then yeah. before you know it you start building a following you start hey i could do this full time yeah, I've never made it to full-time content creation just because I need the benefits with work and all that stuff. I don't know how you do it with health insurance and stuff, doing content full-time. Because I know in America, the health insurance, private health insurance can be crazy expensive. So with the I'm family lucky, and stuff. We're yeah. not lucky in a sense. I'm a veteran. So I get my oh, health care right. through, through the VA. Yeah. So that kind of freaks That's why I was, we was having this conversation with PGT about I'm very fortunate in the sense that making content is my life has been my life oh man on 420 it'll be 10 years that i've been doing this yeah and so when i came into it i came in it as a sense of i'm trying to figure out how can i do this as a job because to me working for yourself is better than working for somebody else it's and true. So that's what i was trying to do and then also i don't have any responsibilities like my daughter is already an adult and married so she's got that going a lot of content creators got kids they got to take care of family members I don't have any of those responsibilities. I get to make videos every day. So I'm fortunate in that sense. My responsibilities is making videos. You, for instance, got a kid, got a wife, got responsibilities. I don't have those. Yeah. And I think that's that that can hold a lot of people back. And if you just started as a hobby, you can get a video out here and there. It might take off. There's people on TikTok that blow up so easily with any sort of content. It's crazy. And you got all these other faceless channels now that are just pumping out money for themselves that are just producing garbage content. And it's like, right. you never know. It's just hit or miss with the algorithms and the way stuff works. So I know you have the time. There's people out there that appreciate the content because you can pump out so much content. And it's like, well, if people aren't getting content from you, they're going to find someone else to watch it from. And it's like, why not get in on getting yourself out there? Right. Definitely don't hurt to try. But I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? You have a, a, a great experience that you can add to your life. It doesn't hurt to try. All right, guys. Well, thank you to 90 once again. As I told you guys in the intro, we are going to take this conversation over to the website. We're going to have at least 15 minutes of brand new. Well, we're, we're going to continue, basically just continue the conversation on the website. So if you want to join us, come subscribe to my site, BassDropKeys.tv. Once again, I will have all of 90s information in the description below. Thanks to him. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, 90, once again. Yeah. I do want to invite you guys to come subscribe to my website, BassDropKeys.tv. On here, what you're getting is the edited version of the pod. If you want the full conversation, the unedited version of the pod, also, I do spend 15 to 30 minutes with each guest. Come over and subscribe to my website, BassDropKeys.tv. 
The rookiemycologist.com is for the merch, for the videos, bassdropkeys.tv.